first part. I sent them to you one time. Call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the April 17th, 2018 Post Falls City Council meeting. Uh, before we start, uh, I just want to let everybody know there are three public hearings tonight. And if anyone wishes to speak, please uh, fill out a form in the back and turn it into our clerk, Shannon. Um, clerk will note that all council members are present. Under uh, ceremonies, announcements, appointments, and presentations, I do have a couple of announcements. Pulse Falls Community B uh, Business Fair is Wednesday, April 25th from 4 to 7 uh, p.m. at the Greyhound Park and Event Center. There will be over 90 businesses and service groups in attendance. This event is free to the public, so stop by and check out some of the great businesses in Pulse Falls. Pulse Falls Sanitation will be doing a citywide garbage pickup on Saturday, April 28th. Items must be placed at the street by 6 a.m., and all items must be bagged, bundled, or in, garbage, in a garbage tote. For more information about the pickup, visit the city's website, www.postfallsidaho.org. The annual e-recycle and shred day is Saturday, April 28th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at City Hall. Drop off your old and unwanted TVs, computers, cell phones, and any electronic items to be recycled. Bring in unused prescription drugs to be disposed of by the police department. Paper shredding services provided by Mountain West Bank from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll be handing out free insulated grocery bags, garbage recycling calendar, and wildflower <coughs> seed bombs. No idea what a wildflower seed bomb is. Sounds interesting. Post Falls Senior Center is hosting a taste of jazz on Saturday, April 28th at 5.30 p.m. at the Post Falls Senior Center. The evening includes food, raffles, auctions, a no-host bar, and more. Tickets are $35 and can be purchased at the Senior Center. All proceeds will benefit the Meals on Wheels program in the Post Falls Senior Center. And as most of you probably have seen, former First Lady Barbara Bush passed away today at the age of 92. She was the wife of the 41st President George H.W. Bush and mother of 43rd President George W. Bush. And uh, I was just talking with someone earlier and said, kind of an end of an era, we've had some classy First Ladies and she was without a doubt one of them. So she will be missed. Tonight, uh, I'm requesting uh, confirmation for the appointment of Gina, and uh, Gina, I probably mispronounced her name, Gina Duzak and Danny Isabel Wolf to the Parks and Recreation Commission. So moved. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Chair, please take the roll. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Wolf? Abstain. Reporters? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. I don't know if I'll abstain because you don't want to get in trouble with Danny or well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, That's pretty much it. <laughs> smart man, smart man. Are there any amendments to the agenda tonight? We have none tonight, sir. Are there any declarations of conflict? Mm -hmm. Would you please present the consent calendar? Item A is minutes from the April 3rd, 2018 City Council meeting. Item B is payables March 27th through April 9th, 2018. Telemore 7th, I'm sorry, item C is Telemore 7th edition subdivision master development agreement, file number S-17-10. Item D is Selty Sway congestion mitigation project bid award to Thorco Incorporated and recommendation of additional funding for this project. Item E is contract with Evan Ferguson concrete for the 2018 street overlay ADA ramp improvements. Item F is contract with quality maintenance for 2018 slurry seal project. Item G is approval for the Prairie Crossing West Comprehensive Plan Amendment in Title 18 Zone Text Amendment Public Hearing to be noticed and scheduled. And that is it. Any questions on consent calendar? Joe. Item D, um, the mitigation project, the, the engineering bid as it noted in our packet was about 30% off and one of the reasons given in the packet was that the technology being used and the lights and they communicate with each other is is better than expected is that I don't, I don't know who would want to answer this question but is that some technology didn't exist when the original estimate came out or or why the 30 percent councillor Malloy Robert Pauls assistant city engineer in doing additional <coughs> research after the numbers came back we talked with our consultant and the answer that came back to me was they pulled the number which a previous project manager had put together three years ago on the project as the cost of the technology. 
During that three-year time frame, they did not update the cost. And also the company which was doing the work, which, it, which goes along with the equipment that we're looking for, has updated their equipment in that time frame. So there's a kind of mitigating circumstances in there that had we had the correct cost when we did an engineer's estimate, we would have had the grant monies adjusted and you wouldn't have seen a 30% overage at this time. We actually had reduced a little bit the grant monies from 2014 to 2017 because there was one traffic signal taken out of the project, but we didn't have the correct numbers for the, t for the uh, hardware and software that was going into the traffic signals. So my apologies on that. So not only is the, has the software and hardware been upgraded in, in that span, but the number originally was incorrect in the first place on the stuff that doesn't exist anymore? Quite possibly. They, they couldn't confirm where they got that number from. I don't you. like saying that to you, but that's mm -hmm. well. What at I least have. you don't say it very often, so I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob, is my understanding we're being allocated another yes. hundred ninety thousand or yeah, something? Yeah, two hundred ninety thousand dollars, which the Cooter Metropolitan Planning Organization was able to acquire at um, a balancing meeting that was held within just the last two weeks, which greatly helped um, the overage and our ability to be able to afford that within our impact fee dollars, which is where the extra dollars are coming from. Now, on the whole, clearly, we're still getting a pretty tremendous value with the grant money and the KMPO money, but... We're putting just... in over $2 million worth of improvements for less than $500,000 in this case due to the grant funding. Yeah, it's it's still a no-brainer. I was just... It's, it's a good question. Yeah. Just kind of a bummer, but anyway. Okay. Thank you. I'm good. Any other questions? Nope. No. Entertain a motion. Move to accept the consent calendar as presented. Second. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Shannon, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Orders? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item up is our first public hearing. Is it Reinerson? Is that how we pronounce it? The Reinerson uh, zone change. With that I will call the public hearing to order. Open the public hearing. Sorry for the delay, but we got the system working here. So the Reinerson zone change, the applicant and owner for this is Scott Reinerson, and you're being requested to review and approve a zone change request. Part of this request is the property is currently zoned a mix of heavy industrial and industrial, and the intent is to be rezoned to community commercial services, which is the CCS zoning district. Project location is as you see here in the the red hatched box it's north of third street um, south of what's known as the idaho veneer site and west of bay street <coughs> and just north of black bay park property size is approximately 1.6 acres uh, physical characteristics is vacant land with one existing shop and there's no significant topology or vegetation um, which would raise a concern <coughs> for the proposal. Water provider would be the City of Post Falls as well as sewer. So as part of the forwarded recommendation to from planning and zoning, they looked at the zone change criteria and I'll go over that with you here. And that is the first criteria is that you would consider the street classifications, traffic patterns, the existing development, future land uses and community plans, and the geographical and natural features. So the first two being the street classifications and traffic patterns, if you've seen the staff report, there's commentary from uh, recognizing that the proposed CCS use wouldn't be detrimental uh, for the adjoining uh, uh, street classifications. Looking at the surrounding zoning, you see here that we have some commercial just to the west, on the north side of the rail, you have some industrial with some R3, medium density, I mean, 
high density residential. Also a bit to the east, we have a zone change we recently did that changed that industrial um, to CCS as well. So um, this area is transitioning from more of maybe historical and industrial type look or demands to more of a mixed development pattern of some multifamily, and some commercial and other mixed use type services. The future land use shows this area as being commercial, that's the red. There is this little bit to the north that you see in the light yellow that's currently zoned industrial but is designated as residential but that for all intents and purposes we would see this as being a commercially designated uh, piece of land. So all in all that that first criteria appears to to meet the uh, the conditions for uh, for it. Looking at the next criteria is that commercial and high density residential zoning is typically assigned along streets with higher road classifications. This would be suitable for Third Street, so that would probably be the complementary uh, adjoining street classifications for that commercial request. Limited or neighborhood commercial, um, this criteria really isn't pertinent to this, but one could allude to the fact that you know this area is becoming more urban, more in the downtown area, and that. You know, your residential uses would be better suited in more of your residential neighborhoods. Potentially your industrial services being in areas that are um, programmed for future industrial as well. And then the last criteria, industrial zoning, isn't really applicable to this request. Agencies that were routed, you see here, um, a pretty extensive list of that. Um, I don't see a, a, a comment. And so I would stand for any questions and concerns you have for me for the proposed zone change. Questions for John? Nope. See that? All right, thanks. The applicant wish to speak? I don't see the rep from the applicant okay. here. Uh, are there any, just move into public comments? Yes. Any comments? We have none. Applicants not here, no comments. Close the public hearing. Council. Well, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. If nobody else has a comment, I'll make a motion. I would move to approve the Reinerson okay. zone change file number RZZ and E-0001-2018. Second. Motion second. Further discussion or questions? Not really. I was just going to make a comment that uh, based on the situation we had in our last meeting, I'm going to be taking a hard look at community commercial services for that loophole that we discovered. And I don't think this is going to be a, a place where somebody's going to try to sneak in and change this at some point in time and put apartments there. And if they do, it's not a bad thing, but it's definitely something I'm going to keep an eye on. Motion second. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Orders? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Commissioner passes, thank you. Next item up is the Cecil Estates Annexation. Open public hearing. <clears throat> yeah, before I begin, uh, you can see on the agenda tonight we have both the uh, annexation request as well as a subdivision request. So. Depending on the outcome of this, it could potentially affect the subdivision later on as part of a, a separate uh, action. So, pertaining to the annexation, the owner, Matthew House and Marla Hedman, with the applicant being Steve Circle of Tri State Consulting Engineering, is being requested to review and approve approximately 10 acres of land to be annexed in the City of Post Falls with the R1 zoning designation. Project location is as you see here. You have Cecil Road running to the east of the highlighted red hatched boxed area with Bogey Drive running along the southern boundary. So it's at the northwest corner of the intersection of those two streets. The current land use is residential in Kootenai County. The, there was no significant topology or vegetation for this site. The, there's currently a single family residential out there. 
Water would be provided by the Ross Point Water District, with sewer being provided by the City of Post Falls. Part of annexation is looking at zoning. Is, and is zoning applicable or appropriate? And we go to back to the zone change criteria. So the street classifications of traffic patterns, the adjacent roads are collector roads and would be compatible with the proposed subdivision. Existing development in the city of Post Falls to the east and north, which you see are yellow, are single family <coughs> residential, either on the east side of Cecil or directly to the north. On the south side of Bogey Drive, there is a commercial development <coughs> potential at that location and actually we're processing a storage facility at that site currently. To the west you see a uh, county, um, it's the white there, that's county land. Looking at the future land use, it's also designated as residential. Um, as cited there was no known geographic or natural features that would present a hazard so this criteria more or less would be met. Looking at the commercial and high density residential zoning and that, that it's typically assigned along streets with higher road classifications, which these are collector roads, but in this area you have a north south corridor with an arterial, Highway 41, that's a commercial corridor that's developing. And so typically you would see development progress away from a higher intense either node or corridor and progress into more of your lower dense single family residential. So in a nutshell, both criteria two and three are met by with what was just presented. And then the industrial zoning isn't applicable with this request. Looking at the annexation policies, there's 13 of them. I chose to highlight the most pertinent. If you have questions on any of the other ones, I can, I can do that. But looking at uh, annexation policy four is dealing with the timing of the annexations and it should be coordinated for orderly, orderly development of the public system and looking at the comprehensive plan and other master plans. <clears throat> so I'll go back to the zoning map is the comprehensive plan directs growth towards infill areas or areas where you have either supporting uh, transportation network and or utilities and services and so since there's subdivisions in a close proximity you have improvements nearby and you have utility services nearby to support the proposal this one goes back into the infill pockets and looking at infill uh, looking at this area sorry to be going back and forth but from prairie looking down this is kind of like a white finger poking down into post falls and so even though it's not technically an infill the more you can square that off it's for all intents and purposes can kind of be viewed as an infill area even though it's not strictly by definition development potential to be realized and should allow sufficient intensity to offset the fiscal impacts of the annexation for residential developments, this is done as part of impact fees. For each permit, they pay a proportionate share towards streets, towards public <coughs> safety and parks. That's how that would be addressed for that sixth policy. The seventh policy is quite long, and I just summed it all up, to can utility services be provided for the proposed project? And in the staff report, it's identified how the project could be served. There's also some other policies and for overall policies, this one here deals with lands, if they're annexed, should have some appropriate zoning designation and consideration with the future land use map. So being the fact that it's designated as residential, where it's off Highway 41, you have surrounding single family residential, uh, would appear as if it would uh, be consistent with this policy. These were the agencies routed. Post Falls Highway District did comment. There was concerns with Bogey Drive that as it exists, it couldn't accommodate the traffic, the through traffic, and should be reconstructed to city standards. Now I'll comment on this a bit. Um, how this is typically done is when you have development, uh, they pay, they usually do improvements center line plus 10 to the 
distance of their project. Generally speaking, they don't go outside of the bounds of their uh, project area. So I'd stand for questions you have for me regarding the annexation in terms of either the zoning part or the annexation part. Any questions, John? I have a question. It doesn't really have to do with the annexation, but could you go back to the future land use map? Yes. Where we've already approved and created a subdivision in that area in Tullamore that's now in red? Yep. Right there. Have we just not updated the map, or is that something we do, we'll do in the future? Seems odd that we would say <laughs> that's going to be CCS or commercial in the future, but we've already approved it for residential. Well, one thing like I could say is this is a future land use map. It's not zoning. So it doesn't serve the similar problems as zoning. Um, so, but staff's identified it. And so when you see the new PUD ordinance we have recently adopted, we have areas that are either industrial with residential or commercial with residential. And it does kind of serve a little bit of, some, could be problematic. So with the current PUD, they would get a zoning district appropriate for the development that they would desire to do as part of their PUD approval. So it's a little clearer to those who buy into subdivisions what an area may be down the road, but then it also encompasses some flexibility for those zoning districts. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Thanks. Any questions, John? Steve? I would just probably get back to uh, Bogey Drive. So is there anything in the future for any improvements to that road? Uh, typically, it's the improvements would occur with development. So as these come into the city sometime down the road, whenever that may be or desired to, that they would do their proportionate share of bogey, of which ultimately you would see full improvements from Greens Ferry to Cecil. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, member of the council. For the record, my name is Steve Circle with Tri-State Consulting Engineers. I'm here on behalf of my client uh, who's purchasing the property, the developer, uh, McCarthy uh, uh, Capital. And, uh, you know, we've read through the staff report. Uh, we've gone through P&Z already. The project, uh, it seems that we seem to get a good fit for annexation into the city. Utilities are available and present with capacity and whatnot. Um, I'd like to add a little more with the subdivision plan. We do, we will be planning on uh, building, improving bogey, as, as John had mentioned about center line plus 10, 10 feet, which is in just, you know, it's code standard, city standard. So, uh, and that's also gonna extend a 12 inch water main to our southwest corner for Ross Point Water District. Um, with that, I'd stand on any questions you might have. We'd certainly appreciate a recommendation for approval for, annex for annexation. Any questions to Steve? Thanks, Thank Steve. you. Anyone wishing to testify? We have none. And I'm assuming no rebuttal at this point. Mm -hmm. That I'll close the public hearing. Council. Start down here this way, this time. You want to, want to say anything? Is it? Excuse me. <laughs> I'd love to say something if I could speak, if you could hear me. Um, yeah, it, bogey is the only issue that I have, but it's, you've got county in there, so you can't do anything. But uh, yeah, it's. I think it's perfect fit. Cool. Yeah. I think it's just makes a natural extension of that area and f follows the guidelines of the other developments that have been going in. So it'll fit in with them. I Any, like it. Anyone to approve the Cecil Estates annexation file number ANNX-0001-2018. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Shannon, please take the roll. Borders? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And the f third and final uh, public hearing tonight is the <coughs> Beck Road vacation. That will open the <coughs> public hearing.
So the applicant is uh, Ben Wymouth from Teal Engineers, and they are representing the owners of Kip Wadsworth of Point Partners, LLC. They are looking for you to review and approve the request of vacation for a portion of Beck Road. What portion is this? Well, here's the new Beck interchange that you see here, and it, as you go off this to the west, there's the intersection of Beck Road and Point Parkway. Just south of there, there's this area in red that is desired to be vacated from city right of way. As you see here off the cuff, you can kind of see how it kind of goes off into the interstate and there's really no intent to connect this down the road through, through those avenues. There is an approved access plan that you see highlighted here in, um, in your staff report was probably more orange than what is showing up here, but um, yellowish orange that um, could be served either through uh, uh, some private street or uh, a common access way. Either way would, would suffice. Uh, there'd be potentially different conditions for that. Plan and review this, and we had no issue with, with being proposed as it was con consistent with an approved subdivision plan. Uh, recognize it terminated at I-90. And in the engineering's comments is that uh, it's classified as a minor arterial north of that uh, intersection of Beck Road and Point Parkway, but uh, south it's, it's not classified and would be considered a, a local street potentially if it was developed. It could be, like there stated earlier, constructed as either a public roadway or some through private drive aisle for commercial <coughs> access. <coughs> Steps going forward is there were concerns with some of the utility providers in that area. So prior to recording a, uh, an ordinance and bringing the vacation ordinance forward, we would look at all of the pertaining uh, purveyors that want to retain their, their easements and that those would get recorded. So that's uh, going forward is looking at pre preserving easements and then eventually bringing an ordinance before you. So Questions, John? I have one question, John. If we approve this vacation, that doesn't mean that they couldn't eventually put a road through there, right? So, at this point, if they wanted to put in a private road, because there's no right-of-way, they would, um, they could put in a private road or a common drive-out. If they were to create a city street, then there would be some right-of-way that would need to be dedicated in order to create that city street if they desired in a different format then it would match what they intend to do rather than just heading to the south. Okay, so ultimately if we do want to extend back south into that piece of property, it's not going to be an issue somewhere down the line. Maybe some right-of-way dedication in either part of that. Okay, just wanted to double check. Anyone else? Thank you. All right, thank you. And we are the applicant, correct? Or are we? No, it'd be uh, Wadsworth, I guess, would be applicant. Yeah, and I don't, oh, there's Ben right there. Do you care to say anything at this point, or? If, if you do, you have to come up and for the record. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. For the record, Ben Weymouth with TO Engineers here tonight, representing Point Partners. Um, just respectfully request your consideration and approval. We've looked at the staff report. We're in agreement with that. Your staff's done a good job getting us here quickly and efficiently. Uh, Councilman Wolf, to address your question, this right away is more or less a vacation that was left over from when all the current improvements out there were put in. It existed before that. Um, vacating it where it's at now will just lead to more efficient development of the space that's left. Uh, there's three of those lined up that hopefully we can tell you about soon. Great. Good. Thanks, good. Go ahead. So you have no uh, concerns about uh, easement rights on that then? No. Continue to keep them. We are, I will mention, we are actively working with all the utility companies to get the easements in place, and we have verbal approval from all of them right now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone wishing to testify? We have none. I'm going to assume no rebuttal. With that, I will close public hearing. Council, how do you wish, wish to act? Move to approve the Beck Road Vacation File Number VACA-0001-2018. Second. Yep. Motion seconds. Further discussion? Shannon, please take the roll. Anthony? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Others? Aye. <laughs>
Borders? Aye. <laughs> Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next up is unfinished business. Tonight we have none, followed by citizens issues. Section, this section of the agenda is reserved for citizens wishing to address the council uh, regarding a city related issue that is not on the agenda. And if anyone wishes to testify, forward name. <coughs> Bob Flowers, <coughs> excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. As most of you know, uh, a week after your last meeting, there was a planning and zoning meeting here, and the same thing happened there that happened here a week prior. They approved 300 more apartments. Now these will not even come in front of you now that the new <coughs> rule changes have come into effect. They use the same method, it's the same developer, <coughs> by coming through the back door, or as it was referred to at the last city council meeting, the loophole of using CCS zoning to get multifamily, high density housing approved again. I would like to request that this council really look into it and put a change to that. All it would take is elimination of one sentence in that ordinance or however, anyway, in the areas that are allowed to uh, develop in CCS. You would, you folks made the rules. You can change the rules. And I believe that this loophole or backdoor or however you want to refer to it should be closed before more and more of the CCS land is gobbled up by high density housing. It, I don't believe that CCS was designed for that. I don't know how that last sentence got put in there, but it's, it has no business there. And I would like to actually know the facts and figures on if somebody could really tell me how many apartment units as well as single family units have been approved within the last year, because I don't believe that our water resources are unlimited. I don't believe that our sewer capacity is unlimited. The only thing that's really unlimited is the taxpayer's dollar. Because it seems to be getting spent quite, quite a lot lately. Anyway, I just ask that the council really look at that and get that loophole closed before another developer shows up and wants to use it again. Thank you. Thank you. For the comment, or uh, anyone else wishing to testify? Seeing none, we'll go down to new business. And the first item on, under new business is Jacob's Run, Run Subdivision. Mayor Jacobson, Council, Lindsay King, Planning Department, here for Jacobs Run Subdivision. Applicant being Jacobson LLC, or I mean, excuse me, owner Jacobson LLC. Applicant is Gordon Dobler with Dobler Engineering. City Council is being asked to review the uh, and approve the proposed 20 lot subdivision on approximately 4.6 acres in the single family residential R1 zone. Hatched out in the red is the proposed site it's in the northeast corner of Bogey Drive and Greens Ferry. 
The current surrounding zoning is R1 single family <coughs> residential, as you can see in the yellow. And then the white there is the county finger, as John was talking about earlier. Currently, there is a single family dwelling um, with vacant pasture land. Or no significant topology or vegetation on the site. Ross Point Water District will be the water provider and the applicant has provided a will serve letter to, uh, to staff for that. Sewer will be the city of Post Falls. Here's a preliminary plan of the proposed subdivision. As you can see, they have the, the, the existing home right here in this lot and then Bogey Drive down here to the south. Again, it'll be 20 single family lots uh, in one phase with an average lot size of about 7,700 square feet, uh, density of 4.6 units per acre with new streets of Arliss Lane and Natty Court, which will then connect down to Bogey. There will be no access to Greens Ferry. There are six subdivision review criteria that the applicant has to meet in order for approval. First being the definite provision has been made for a water supply system um, that's adequate of quantity and quality, which they have provided with uh, their will serve letter from Ross Point Water District. Second, adequate provisions have been made for a public sewage system, um, and that has been provided by the city of Post Falls. Oops, went too fast. Proposed streets are consistent with the transportation element of the comprehensive plan. As you can see in the staff report, um, our engineering department did make comments on that and Bogey as well as Greens Ferry will be improved to city standards. Number four, all areas of the proposed subdivision which may involve soil or uh, topographical conditions presenting ha hazards have been identified. There have been no hazards uh, or topographical in, uh, excuse me, conditions identified at all. <coughs> Number five, the area proposed for subdivision is zoned for the proposed use. As you saw previously, the area is zoned R1 single family residential, which does meet this criteria. Number six, uh, the developer has met, or made adequate plans to ensure the community will bear no more than its fair share of costs for streets, park, and other public services or facilities. This is met um, in the building process or the permitting process. So when they apply for a building permit for the house, they'll have to pay their impact fees and things like that. So that's taken care of there. We did receive two comments, one from Post Falls Highway District about Bogey Drive, stating that as it exists, cannot accommodate any additional through traffic and should be reconstructed to current city standards. As we so spoke about in the previous uh, public hearing for the annexation on Cecil uh, and Bogey, it is, um, the middle part of it is in the county, so um, we can't take care of that, but we can require the applicant to improve Bogey on their property line from the easterly side to the west. Cooney County Fire and Rescue was neutral and any code requirements will be addressed during permitting. These are the agencies that were notified and of those agencies, those the two that were commented on before responded. And I'll stand for any questions. Lindsay, we talked briefly before, but yes. uh, in the conditions that were included in our packet from planning and zoning, I believe they were in error because they were talking about residential access to uh, Chase Road and Grange Avenue. That's so correct. I'm sure that probably came from a different subdivision. It did. Okay. That was a, a typo on my part, and I do apologize about that. Um, it has been taken care of uh, in the findings, in the sign findings, um, where it's, it's, a, it's finding number eight, I believe, soil areas. Seven and eight both. Yeah, seven and eight both, and they have been taken care of in Good. the sign findings. So. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. <laughs> Any other questions? Questions. Oh. Lindsay, what is the road classification for Greens Ferry? Uh, minor arterial? Minor arterial. It's my understanding that when we approve a subdivision, <coughs> the idea is that there won't be access to a major or minor arterial? Correct. There won't be any access to Greens Ferry. But there is access now. There won't be. There are access, they will uh, have to access elsewhere. So either... And it w I can defer this to the applicant. He might be able to give you a little bit better of an idea, but it was there was discussion of bogey up here to this area or an, ease, an access easement here. So I'll leave that to the applicant too. Okay, I'll ask him. This, won't, this isn't a public hearing. No, so, so we don't. Oh, so oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we wouldn't listen to the applicant. Rob, you want to, yeah. can you address her up? Mm -hmm. Councilman Wolf, uh, members of the 
council it is a requirement of the subdivision that no access points will be on to Greens Ferry Road and that they right now um, if at this area here they are showing an access easement which allows access to bogey drive for this lot um, during the subdivision process they could also re revise that and they could if they wanted to have an access point through an easement up here as well but there are a couple different options for them to provide that access without going on to Greens Ferry Road. So are we going to, because currently the, that house accesses Greens Ferry? Correct. And so when they develop the subdivision, they will close off that access <coughs> and um, convert the garage to a different access point. Okay. We've done that on other subdivisions in the town over the years. Okay. That's what I wanted to double check with. We weren't going to still have access out onto Greens Ferry from that. In, in property. this case, we won't. You may find in the future there may be circumstances when we redevelop lands that there may become an instance where we have to allow an access point, but we will try to keep that to a, a bare minimum because it does become a safety hazard when you have a residential driveway backing out onto a road of 30, 35 miles per hour, or in this case, um, it transitions to 40 just north of here. Well, we'll cross that bridge when that one comes up. Yes. This one, we're going to have access correct. changed, correct? Great. That's all I wanted to know. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Rob. Any other questions? Did you have a question? Thank you, Lydia. Okay. I kind of do. I'm back on Bogey Drive. Okay. So to the south of that, on the map, does Bogey go all the way through to Greens Ferry? Here? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. Yeah, it goes from Greens Ferry to map, Cecil. So. I'll go. There, that's what I, I yes. was on that one. So Greens Ferry, and then yeah. it'll go through to Cecil. Although I don't, I don't know why anybody would want to drive on the road <laughs> on Bogey. Yeah, I think that's kind of the point <laughs> that keeps coming up as we mm -hmm. put more potential traffic on Bogey, as it is in the county. Thank you. You betcha. Entertain a motion. I would move to approve Jacobs Run subdivision file number SUBD-0001-2018. Second. Motion second. Further discussion. Shannon, please take the roll. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Borders? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Next item up is Pioneer, Pioneer Acres subdivision. actually both going to be up here just briefly um, so there were some questions before this new business item and before tonight's were there questions about the pioneer acre subdivision and the annexation and how we got here so I'm gonna put this down here this is a, um, a copy from March 20th where you can see the pioneers annexation that there was a public <laughs> hearing on this annexation and the file number pertaining to that annexation. So once it was approved at city council, then it made it eligible then to, for you to hear the subdivision as a new business item. The timing of which something legally becomes annexed is a time of what we do is we get annexation agreements and annexation ordinances in place to be reviewed and approved and it, that ordinance recordation is when it officially becomes in the city of Post Falls and of which then development can occur. So that part doesn't have bearing on the new business item tonight and just wanted to get some hopeful, some clarity of kind of how we got from point A to point B and how this is on a new business item tonight. So. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Mayor Jacobson, Council, Lindsey King, Planning Department again. Here for the Pioneer Acres subdivision. <coughs> Owner being Larry Guy, First Security Corp, and Arnold Estates HOA, applicant Gordon Dobler with Dobler Engineering. City Council is being asked to review and approve the proposed subdivision of approximately 14.53 uh, acres uh, for 54 single family R1 lots, uh, averaging roughly 8,700 square feet. In your staff report, it may say 57 lots, 
but the applicant has reduced that down to 54, which ultimately increased some of the lot sizes. So those numbers may vary. The location is west of Spokane Street, just north of Grange, in kind of a weird upside down boot shape. The surrounding zoning is R1 single family residential. You can see in this brown area here, this is um, a residential mobile home park. And up here in this white area is county pocket and you have some smart code up to the north. The current land is vacant uh, with native grasslands and other vegetation with no significant topography. East Green Acres is uh, irrigation district will provide the water. The applicant has provided a will serve letter from that irrigation district and City of Post Falls will be the sewer provider. Here is a preliminary layout of the proposed subdivision. It will be in two phases. You have, my mouth. You have the phase one down here, which is south of the railroad tracks here and the north. Um, so the south will be the 17 lots, north will be 37. This is Guy Road here to the west and this portion here of Guy Road has been vacated, so it will not be a through street. Um, that Tennessee will, which connects into Whiskey Flats, or which will connect, will be the primary access point for here up north and then down south here to Grange for, this, oops, for phase one. Uh, there were a couple condition amendments as well in this one, <laughs> so I do apologize again. Uh, condition number seven um, spoke to this and it will be changed to the proposed tract A and tract B within phase one shall be incorporated into lots seven and ten as a part of the platting. As you can see here, you have these two lots that have some connection to the previous subdivision. So that's what that's for. Again, it'll be 54 single family residential lots. Uh, phase one will be 17 lots to the south of the railroad tracks. Phase two, north is 37. Density about 3.72 dwelling units per acre. New streets will be Blayton Street with the extension of Tennessee Avenue, which I talked about earlier, connecting to Whiskey Flats, and then Stagecoach Drive to the south, which will connect to Grange. <coughs> Subdivision review criteria are six. The first being water uh, supply has been deemed of quality and quantity, uh, which the applicant provided with a will serve letter from East Green Acres Irrigation <coughs> District. Number two, adequate provisions have been made for public sewage systems, which the city of Post Falls will provide their sewage system. Three, proposed streets are consistent with the transportation element of the comprehensive plan. Upon development, the streets uh, mentioned will be approved or improved uh, and meeting all city standards. Four, the area proposed for the subdivision may be, that involves soil or topographical, trap, ugh, pardon me, topographical conditions presenting ha hazards have been identified. We have identified no hazards or topographical issues. Number five, the area proposed for subdivision is zoned for the proposed use and the use conforms to other requirements found in this code. As John spoke of earlier, the property, the larger portion of the property back here in this white hatch area is uh, now and it will be annexed in upon the the signed agreements as an R1 single family residential zone which would then meet that criteria. This small triangle up here was already within the city, city as an R1 uh, zoning. And then number six, the developer has made adequate plans to ensure the community uh, will bear no more than its fair share of costs for uh, impacts to streets, parks, and other public facilities. Again, that will be taken care of at time of permitting. Agencies routed are listed below. Re we received a comment from Kootenai County Fire and Rescue. They are neutral and within the service boundary. Comments? Questions? Questions, Lindsay. Alan. Lindsay on Tennessee Avenue. Yes. It currently runs kind of a northeast angle. Is the intention, I don't know if you can answer this or whether Rob will answer this, but is the intention is that street will punch through eventually and connect to is that Spokane Street? I'll defer that one to Rob. Good evening and again, Councilman Wolf and members of the council. Where Tennessee Avenue goes up 
to the northeast from here. We're not sure how that remaining parcel is going to redevelop. It's going to become problematic to have an intersection in the remaining space on Spokane Street between already subdivided lands and the railroad to have a safe access point. Um, I think it might be pro it might be rather unlikely that we'll see Tennessee Avenue intersect Spokane Street, and this will end up just being an internal circulation between Guy, Guy Road. Okay, so Rob, since you're up there, that means that all the houses on the north side in phase two, all that traffic's going to go down through Whiskey Flats or go north on Guy Road? They will utilize Guy Road and Tennessee Avenue to get out of the subdivision, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Rob. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Lindsay. Entertain a motion. I'd move to approve Pioneer Acres Subdivision File Number SUBD-0002-2018. Second. Motion second. Further <clears throat> discussion. Janet, please take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. <coughs> Aye. Borders? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And the final item under new business is Cecil Estate Subdivision. Mary Jacobson, Council, Lindsay King, Planning Department. Still. Again, yeah. still. <laughs> Never leaving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here for the Cecil Estate Subdivision. Owner uh, Matthew House and Marla Hedman, applicant Steve Circle with Tri State Consulting and Engineering. Uh, council is being asked to approve uh, to subdivide approximately nine and a half acres in an R1 single family residential zone, uh, uh, approximately <coughs> 35 residential lots, averaging about 8,400 square feet in size. Project location is on the northwest corner of Cecil and Bogey Drive, here hatched out in the red. Current land use is a single family residential uh, in Kootenai County. Well, as we spoke of earlier, it'll now be annexed in. Uh, no significant <coughs> topology or vegetation. Water's provided by Ross Point Water District and sewer by the city of Post Falls. The surrounding zoning is in the yellow here, R1 residential. In the red and pink is commercial. And in the white to the west is Kootenai County. Future land use is residential in the light yellow, and the commercial will be red. It will be contiguous with the other subdivisions in the area. And here is a proposed subdivision plan. <coughs> As you can see, the road will connect uh, from, Calorie Street will connect from the north to the south down to Bogey. And then we have Bunting Lane, which will be a future connection upon future development or annexation into the city. Again, it'll be 35 single family residential lots in one phase at 8,400 square feet uh, for lot, average lot size, density of 3.6 units per acre. New streets will be Bygone Way and Cinder Lane with a connection of Calorie Street down to the south of Bogey and then Bunting Lane eventually to the west. Subdivision criteria, there's six of them. First, for water supply, uh, that there are, it's adequate in terms of quality and quantity, which will be provided by Ross Point Water. Number two, the adequate provision has been made for a public sewage system, um, and that will be provided again by the City of Post Falls. Three, the, pro the proposed streets are consistent with the transportation element of the comprehensive plan. As noted in staff report, our engineering department has made uh, their comments and all roads will be developed to city standards. Four, all areas of the proposed subdivision, which will, may involve soil or topo topographical conditions presenting hazards, have been identified. None of those ha hazards or topographical issues have been identified. Five, the area proposed for the subdivision is zoned for the proposed use and the use conforms with uh, other requirements found in the code upon the previous the annexation for the previous hearing tonight it will then be the zoning will be adequate for this subdivision 
sorry. Six, the developer has made adequate plans to ensure the community will bear uh, no more than its fair share of costs uh, with impacts to streets, parks, and other public uh, facilities. This again will be taken care of uh, in building and the other, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> in one of those moments, um, plans and permits. Agencies routed are listed below. We did receive a comment from Post Falls Highway District, as we did with some of the other <coughs> subdivisions you saw earlier tonight, about Bogey Drive as it exists and it, as it cannot accommodate any additional through traffic. Um, the applicant will be required to construct um, their half plus 10 for the Bogey Drive as far as their property line goes. And then upon development, Bogey Drive will hopefully continue on and go through to the middle. Questions? Questions, Lindsay? See none. Entertain a motion. I'd move to approve Cecil Estate Subdivision File Number SUBD 0003 2018. Second. Motion second. Further discussion. <laughs> Shannon, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Borders? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next up, uh, ordinances and resolutions. Uh, the first item is resolution, uh, adopting revised land use hearing procedures. <coughs> Move to approve the resolution adopting revised land use hearing procedures. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Shannon, please take the roll. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Borders? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Thank you very much. Next item is the uh, Tullamore North Zone Change uh, Ordinance. Move to place the ordinance Tullamore Zone Change to single family residential on its first and only reading by title only while under suspension of the rules. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Shannon, please take the roll. Anthony? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Borders? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Which pass, Mr. Wilson. An ordinance of the City of Post Falls, a municipal corporation of the state of Idaho, providing for change in zoning classification for the land described in section one of this ordinance from community commercial services to single family residential R1, providing for amendment of the official zoning map to reflect this change, providing that all prior zones applicable to the lands described in section one are hereby superseded and providing an effective date. Move to approve the ordinance to Lamar North Zone zone change to single family residential to direct the clerk to assign the appropriate number and that it be published by summary only. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Let's take the roll. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Borders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And the last is an ordinance on the Plaza 41 zone change. Move to place the ordinance Plaza 41 zone change to commercial community commercial services on its first and only reading by title only while under suspension of the rules. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Borders? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Motion passes. Mr. Wilson? An ordinance of the City of Post Falls, a municipal corporation of the state of Idaho providing for change in zoning classification for the land described in section one of this ordinance from industrial to community commercial services, providing for amendment of the official zoning map to reflect this change, providing that all prior zones applicable to the lands described in section one are hereby superseded and providing an effective date. Move to approve the ordinance Plaza 41 zone change to commercial to community commercial services to direct the clerk to assign the appropriate number and that it be published by summary only. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Shannon, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Borders? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item up on the agenda is administrative staff reports. First item is Highway 41 Tech Park. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to provide an update on the proposed urban renewal Highway 41 Tech Park. As we've entered into looking at creating this urban renewal um, and looking at what the map would look like, 
there are a number of county pockets on the east side of Highway 41, and in other parts of the state, they've actually included some of these county pockets within their urban renewal. We know these pockets will annex eventually into the city, and they'll benefit from the sewer lines that are gonna run, um, the alternate Meyer sewer line, and also the sewer line coming down Highway 41. And so we wanted to ask council if you're comfortable if the urban renewal when they meet this week um, approve going forward with asking the county if they would allow us to include those county pockets if the council is comfortable with that jelly if putting the cart from the horse here if the county says no what's our plan of action we would just create the map around those county parcels okay. so we'll have two maps one including one um, not including the county parcels so that we can move forward either way the most logical and most effective map would include those county parcels but we also understand that it's um, you know it's up to the county to determine whether or not they would like to see those parcels included so if the county parcels are included and we've we're running a wastewater line is that what it was for yes that primarily the infrastructure is uh, for wastewater for this district and if they're in the county even though there's a wastewater line through that parcel, would someone who develops that parcel be able to uh, connect the line without being annexed in the Only, city? No, or they would have to be annexed into the city. So it would just be a matter of uh, extending that line through county property? It's going to be in the right of way, but it would be in front of that property, yes. Okay. The other part that we're uh, running into is the current Highway 41 East Post Falls uh, district has parcels on the east side of Highway 41. There's, I think, 24 parcels total. And so the Urban Renal is going to look at de-annexing those parcels out of the East Post Falls district so they could be included in this new district. And that's just to make uh, council aware that that process is undergoing currently with the Post Falls Urban Renal Commission. So in Coeur Lane, they did this, I think, last year. It was driven by the city. This process will be driven by the um, Urban Renal Commission, but staff and Urban Renal have been working together cooperatively on this. Right now we have a, a timeline of all the actions that need to happen for this Urban Renal District to be created, and then we're on page three. So there's a number of things that have to be coordinated. The annexation of the property itself, which you guys are seeing that process go through, the zone change, uh, the de-annexation, which doesn't mean that the property is being removed from the city itself. It just means it's being removed from an urban renal district. Then an inclusion of those properties within the new district. So the base would reset in that case, would it not? Yes. So those that base would reset benefit. on those 24 parcels. Okay. Which I would anticipate with the current real estate market we've seen that mm -hmm. that's going to uh, increase that base which will then put the tax dollars back to the uh, send the tax dollars back to the taxing entities that is correct um, and we're looking at trying to have maybe a workshop sometime in May early June for the Commission and Council to get together and have some of these conversations one-on-one -on -one with each other uh, this is moving quickly I mean from some respects it seems slowly but from other respects considering the number of steps that have to be taken it's moving fairly quickly through the process comments you're looking for a motion Shelley just support I don't think we need a, a formal motion are the county parcels in question under the same ownership as the city parcels in this district or do we know or do we they're care? all various owners of the different parcels uh, many of them are the little five acre uh, county pockets with homesteads that are over on the east side of highway 41 by Horsehaven I want to say is so shall you do the owners have to agree to be included in no. this tour just the county makes that decision yes okay so the homeowners themselves the owners of the property would see no difference other than I think when they send out the bills they actually show the urban renal um, portion going to urban renal separate from the portion that's going to the various taxing districts and so you'll see that separation on your billing but the amount being billed would be exactly the same they're not going to get billed for city taxes Okay. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. That's the action item. Do we need to make a motion on that, Warren? Or? No, I think the idea is that we want to make sure that you're comfortable with us approaching the county before we do that. Any nays? No. I think it would only be prudent to approach the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They Definitely. have to pass it's a resolution, I believe, for it to be included. So they do have to take a formal action. And my concern is that we have a plan B, and it sounds yeah. like you do, so that's we good. We do, yes. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item is modification of water and wastewater budget for uh, fiscal year 2018. We did 
talked about that some time ago. Good. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Jason Faulkner, Finance Director. It was about halfway through the fiscal year 18 budget. John um, Beecham had approached me and said that the current budget that he had, is currently working under, the line items that he has, needs to be reallocated. What that means is he didn't need to extend his budget for go through a budget amendment. Just that the lines he could still work within the total budget that he was uh, uh, that was adopted for fiscal year 18. Just that he wanted to modify the lines where the money is actually being spent. Um, that's generally how internally Shelley has the authority to move the line items between within certain funds. <clears throat> this one was so large between between the, the wastewater that I want to take this to council so the council knew what was being what was being transferred um, just budget wise <clears throat> so in your council packet there's an Excel spreadsheet that's in blocks and the first block is the, the capital replacement about 4.9 million that line was reduced and it was reallocated to various line items <coughs> such as tertiary um, the headworks upgrade to the admin facility and also for the membrane pilot test the second block is a reduction of a, a replacement fund with also within the wastewater of a million dollars. And you can see that the uh, little over a million was reallocated to the master plan, Jacqueline lift station, Ida line, and also to the Ponderosa lift station design. Again, you'll see what the budget was originally adopted, what the, the recommend what we're um, going to move within each fund, and then the change. And at the bottom, there's still, there's still a, a net change of zero. And the last block is not the first two is for wastewater. The last block on there was for the water fund. So since it, that is a separate fund, there's a few items we had reduced the line items and then reallocated, the, going to reallocate the budget for the water main upgrade and the other, and that was for 300,000 and another one um, for a well replacement design of 300,000. Again, after the line items are adjusted, there's still no change to the, the total budget that was adopted. And I just want to assure council, all of this is within the master plans. The budget was not allocated correctly when it was adopted in 18. And so it should have been allocated within those various lines. We're not adding any additional personnel. We're not regrading any personnel. We're not changing any projects. It's the same projects that you've seen and you've approved the design for as we move through the process. The dollars were not allocated where they should have been within the actual individual line items and as Jason said typically that's something that we can just I could sign off on but we felt this was so significant too large, yeah. and that we wanted council to be aware of it especially a lot of changes that have been made so mm -hmm. I appreciate that I do have a question I, I talked with Shelley briefly about it uh, Jason under your memo uh, first page item number two uh, just clarify for me it said uh, Appropriate amount for the headwork office remodel. The project receive a fiscal year 17 budget approval of 60,000. Total cost for 201,000. So is that just the amount that was budge budgeted in that year for the total project, with the anticipation that the balance would be budgeted at a later date? Correct. Okay. Because the money stays within the fund, and so when the project's expended, it is um, budgeted for the, the year that it's actually spent. Okay. I just want to clarify because when you look at it, it looks like we approved 60, but we're spending 200. Yeah. But that was not the case. Yeah, that's correct. Any comments? Good. As long as there's no like yeah. breakdown. As long as there's no ongoing expenses and the net change is zero or less, I'm happy. Yeah, like I said, generally these happen in, internally. Like if we have a, if they need money in the PD and we can take it from another another department and just transfer it over. But these but, but these dollar amounts are so large that uh, I thought it was appropriate to take it to council so you knew what we were what we're doing. I just saw Dave get really excited when he said, take money from the PD and put it to another department. His head just like jerked. Well, I think in looking at as a council member, it makes it easier for me to track the funds as they're actually spent then, because you'll have the line items you can follow instead of just one, one large amount. One so. of the theory is it's a budget by the, the, the total at the bottom, but I actually like the, the details to follow what the yes. actual spent is. So I, I appreciate they're not going over departmental wise what they're allocated in total, but I do like the supporting detail to, to line up with actually was approved what the expenses are yeah well and i'd like to comment as well and compliment if you will because basically we are required to report the one number the total right but we've always tried to be transparent and provide better breakdown and this does that this puts it where it should go 
uh, I think it's full transparency. So I pre applaud the efforts you folks are making to clean that up and address it. It was a um, uh, big kudos to John Beecham because he came up with a list of saying, okay, here's the lines I could, I want to reduce, and here's where I actually need the dollar amount. And some of the projects are already currently going, such as the admin building. He just wanted to make sure that there was budget on the light items where he is expending it. So. I think one other item too that helps us understand future requests because sure. we'll have something to compare to now exactly. instead of just one large figure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, so. yeah. One other thing I'd like to mention, um, Councilor Wolf had asked uh, two meetings ago if we could have a summary report go out on the monthly reports. Jason and I have been working on that. Our current accounting software doesn't have a great summary of report attached, but we've been looking <clears> at we were approached by what's called an open gov software where you can put out for transparency for citizens and Tyler does have a back end system similar to that. So we're looking at using that back end system as a summary report. So we are working on that to try to get you guys a, a more easy to read summary report. And so it's, it's something that we hope to achieve by the end of the fiscal year, but our software is not friendly to us. Great. Thank you. Appreciate You're welcome. That. Good. Thanks. You're Thanks, welcome. Jason. Next item up for mayor comments, and tonight I have none. Uh, council comments, I think uh, Councillor Anthony has a comment. Yes, I do. Uh, <coughs> even though it seems like uh, we, we've gotten through winter, I don't know about the last few weeks, it's kind of cold, we've went back. Um, we felt the, the city's put together a committee to uh, study the possibility of snow gates on our, uh, for plowing the streets. I know this is something the council has discussed in the past, and we finally got a group together of uh, staff and uh, department heads to, to take a look at this item. And first of all, I want to comment, I really appreciate the, the cooperation of all the departments this year on the snow plowing. I, this isn't coming from any complaints I received because I didn't receive any on snow plowing. I think you guys did a great job. But what we're looking at is to try to put together some accurate costs for the council, equipment needs, uh, pros and cons, time to plow out streets, differences. So we want to have a complete package that we can give to the council so you can make a decision on whether to, uh, to go ahead with the Snowgate program. Also, um, besides the council decision of it, we want to get citizen input. So we're going to have a survey developed, which will be on the website, but also we'd like to get cooperation from some of the HOAs. So we're making a request of the presidents of the HOAs to contact uh, Paul at snowworries at postfallsidaho.org so we could send them the survey they could send that out to the members in their HOA and then what we would do is then those members would return it back to that snowworries.org uh, so the all the HOA president has to do is send it out so he doesn't have to compile the information he doesn't have to do anything but ask his people in his association to send this on to the city so then city staff would compile that information. And so this would also do two things. It will give us a list of all the HOA presidents and update it if they respond to it and get some valid uh, feedback from the citizens and then that with the costs and um, equipment needs to be able to present that to the council for the budget process. and be able to make a decision at that time because it is it, it's, it's a f philosophical change in how we're operating right now Steve can you coordinate with Kit and Stephanie to make sure we get it on websites and uh, where that survey will be or how we can get that survey Paul will do that Paul yeah. will do it good yeah thank you Paul we've met several times and we want to get as much public input as we can on this because I think it's important you know, we've been told for years snow gates don't work and people use them, so I appreciate the fact that you're looking to see if, in fact, we can make them work and if it's economically feasible. So, yep. Anybody else? Al. A couple things. Uh, this last Saturday I got to do one of my most favorite things, sitting on the council and being a volunteer within Post Falls, and that was giveaway trees. Gave about 3,000 trees, 3,200 trees or something like that. It's an awesome thing to think that a lot of those trees are going to end up in post falls and I have four or five of them in my yard already over the years but I did want to commend Dave and his team and Preston from uh, Urban Forestry you guys do a great job we were only there for I don't know hour and a half maybe this year and it was a nice flow of people but it was just nice to be able to hand those trees out free trees I know you guys do a great job getting those donated so congratulations and I too would like to uh, thank Councilman 
Anthony for his work on the snow gates. I know you hit the ground running on that, Steve. It's been something that we've hashed out a couple of times or talked about, and nobody's ever really taken the time and effort to do it. So thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. And I, I would like to make the uh, email address real clear to everybody. So it's snow worries, S N O W W O R R I E S, at postfallsidaho.org. And so uh, people can respond to that, and we can get them copies of the survey. <coughs> Thanks, Steve. Gary. So I have a question that I don't know if anybody can answer. I was fixated on bogey tonight because I hear a lot about that. That is one of those things that I hear about people that live in that area. So the Post Falls Highway District on all of those said that the road cannot take any more traffic. If it's county road, why isn't that road maintained by the county, which would be the Post Falls Highway District? Rob, you want to take an answer at that or a crack at that one? It's a gravel road. <laughs> Councilwoman Thorson, members of the council, Bogey Avenue, and then we also have oh, just to the north of it, Hope Avenue, Kildeer they all fall under the same gambit and that you have a road that is on public it's dedicated public rights of way dedicated back, back with the post falls irrigated tracks in the early 1900s they were never built to a public standard and the highway district has never accepted them for maintenance standpoints so it is public right of way but they don't maintain them and so what we what we're seeing is a uh, common item is people want to drive across it they have every legal right to do that because it is public road as we the city are building and encroaching into that area we're slowly building that road improving it but that also encourages other people to drive on that dirt section um, does that help sometimes in pushing modernization of the road yes um, the highway district has said that in some of those cases that if the people who live along <coughs> that road are willing to put up the money and pave the road, the highway district would take those roads over for a maintenance standpoint. Um, somewhat similar to when someone annexes into the city of Post Falls and they want to build a road, we <coughs> tell them they build the roads, they put it in public rights of way, we'll take care of it afterwards. Does that uh, answer your question? Yes, it's going to be a long time before that road is fixed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen surprised. a lot of that road developed within the last five years. We've seen um, between Kildeer and, and Bogey and with what's being proposed and what you heard tonight, you've got almost a half mile of new roadway out of two miles of road. So you're, you're getting there. Patience. Yeah. That's what you're encouraging. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to make a comment. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for stepping in for Kit. Uh, Kit, she's doing a great job. We miss you. Come back soon. But Stephanie, we appreciate what you've done uh, covering all the meetings while she's gone. So thank you very much. With that, we do need a public hearing tonight. Executive no. I'm sorry, executive. <laughs> we only had three. We, we don't, we don't need any more. <laughs> public public yeah. 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 <laughs> how about executive <laughs> session tonight not to exceed how many minutes? 15. Move to enter into executive session pursuant to Idaho Code. 74-2061C to acquire interest in real property which is not owned by a public agency. Further that no action will be taken and the session will last approximately 15 minutes. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Jana, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Borders? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We'll enter executive session.
call the meeting back to order. Are there any motions to come forward? Adjourn. Motion to leave. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.